I'm uh, honored to be here today. I'm joining you from outside Annapolis, Maryland in the United States. And we are an early stage startup focusing on cultural intelligence. Um, IVAO stands for Intelligent Voices of Wisdom. Our uh, product is CultureGraph, and we spent a lot of time doing customer discovery and deep research into the need for enterprises to have a smart tool like this that provides um, real-time cultural insights to help enterprises create more effective and efficient experiences for consumers. So we have our map, calendar, and top trending tools that offer human-to-human -human and bot-to-human insights around cultural holidays, food, music, art festivals at any given moment. So if you think about the problem, hyper-personalization is set to really drive uh, consumer engagement in this next decade. Uh, clearly with COVID, um, the world is ushered into an isolated world for the moment. But even before the pandemic, enterprises didn't have the small data needed to meaningful en meaningfully engage with consumers. So our API platform is an easy to use and powerful library that helps better identify and analyze consumer audiences and their lifestyles, really usher in human-centered personalization in the age of automation with respect to culture, and informing AI solutions and products that are relevant to global cultures. So think about knowledge graphs and how we can teach machines uh, relationships between sustainable development goals and fostering a nature-first global culture. Think about the way that we can reason with machines and teach them about our cultures through our structured data. So we take the healthcare industry as an example. Patient-centered, culturally sensitive healthcare shows better compliance and improved clinical outcomes. This is a proven fact. Chatbots and virtual patient navigators will be culturally relevant and respond to doctors and patients in more engaging, engaging way. Gartner reports that by 2022, 25% of online interactions will be run by virtual assistants. That's up 2% from what we do now. So take Dr. Smith, an oncologist in Washington, DC. Her patient has come from New Delhi and she will be having surgery on Diwali. So Dr. Smith has access to CultureGraph as a research tool in her hospital, and she wants to see where Diwali is being celebrated. So she can use our tool for that. In addition, our chatbot could send Dr. Smith a push notification that includes a story on Diwali and other data she's requesting. Currently, American Express and other uh, business uh, card, uh, credit card holders do a great job. On Twitter, they'll put a picture of Diwali and they'll uh, say, you know, happy Diwali, here's your 20% discount. Think about 2022, when Culture Graph is the engine training chatbots to respond appropriately to customers' inquiries that are culturally sensitive. In this case, uh, booking a hotel for a quinceanera, which requires a large ballroom, and the chatbot is aware. So our monetization is threefold, enterprise partnerships, uh, API tiers, of course, and product adoption. Enterprises will adopt CultureGraph to sustain a more competitive advantage. Uh, we do have competitors in the area of sentiment intelligence and uh, social profiling, but we tailor our data to be more culturally appropriate. We also offer computational data set challenges. Currently, we're building our MVP, and uh, we also are running data competitions to source new data. Our team is um, award-winning and experienced building AI products and solutions. And we also have experience uh, engaging with consumers at NPR News and across NASA. We're raising $500,000 and uh, I'll be happy to take your questions. Uh, we've been featured in Forbes AI Trends and currently have a product on Google Assistant. Thank you so much. Thanks, Devar. Great presentation. I think there's a very quick question from Sasha. Please, Sasha, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, sorry. <laughs> Such an interesting uh, technology. Um, and I have a quick question. How do you reach your consumers? So it sounds like you have two end users, right? And you can use healthcare as, a, as an example. And then I have a second question. How do you respect uh, privacy laws? Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, we do have our team members also online. So a big shout out to IVAO all over the world. Thank you for joining us. Um, we think that um, that is really dependent on the onboarding that we do with the clients. So it really depends on their pain point. So what cultures are they trying to reach? And so in that context, uh, as you said, if it's a healthcare industry, um, they would be able to use our APIs uh, to get push notifications around you know, um, creating an app that they want, or if it's a human resources department that wants to have 
culturally inclusive stories to inspire more women to, for example, join the tech industry. Uh, you can use our APIs to share more culturally relevant stories for human resources purposes. And I know there's a longer answer, so I guess um, I'm happy yeah. to do a follow-up. Yes, go ahead. So if there's a follow-up, you can maybe do the, uh, the longer answer if, if any of the judges wants to, wants to follow up on that. If, uh, if not, any other questions from, from the, the judges? I, uh, I've got a two-part question that are connected. So first, I think you're really hitting on a, an important area. Um, there's a lot of focus on preserving culture and heritage, but there's also a lot of different things to that. So there's I mean, a, lot of, a lot of traditions, holidays, customs. How are you going to What's your, your approach to tackle all that, you know, given it's a vast space? And second, tied to that is, have you considered doing some strategic partnerships like the United Nations actually has a whole initiative around preserving culture and heritage? Yes, absolutely. Um, so a couple quick things. So there are APIs that um, allow you to understand where na natural, uh, national holidays and festivals are happening. But what that data exists, what doesn't exist is what you do with that data. On the back end, when you're training your AI models to understand that, you know, there's National Day in Afghanistan and that's tied to this food and it's tied to this music and it's tied to this culture. So imagine a Neo4j graph that is able to ingest this information in real time and be able to share and preserve that um, segment, that particular culture around that national holiday. So um, the other point is that uh, I think currently um, we have to make this a partnership. This has, th this is a made major task, right? But I think we have to begin. Uh, Stephen Hawking talked about why we need to pause and do beneficial AI. And we're not suggesting that you can't make money. We're in fact suggesting you will make more money because uh, businesses are looking for personalization that's going to work. They, they don't have this piece of it for automation, right? And so, um, I think I answered part of your question. What's the follow-up? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, briefly about indigenous knowledge. So we are presenting to the United Nations on June 9th, our indigenous knowledge graph. We have brought together um, Microsoft uh, software engineer from Cherokee Heritage, uh, Navajo Nation uh, conversational AI technologist, um, and Victor Yarlett from the Crow Native American tribe, who's an AI researcher, We've all come together, created a demo on how we can use our stories around food and recipes and create a knowledge graph of indigenous knowledge, evolution of food, and its relationships to the sustainable development goals. Great. I have a quick question, if possible. One more. Please, yes, yes. I, um, it's a bit of a twofold question, but it's connected. What is your customer focus? It sounds like you are trying to tackle number of industries. And then within the customer, what does the success look like? What KPIs maybe are you monitoring? Yeah, so uh, we actually had uh, an amazing opportunity to meet with some top uh, companies in the United States. Um, again, our culture graph is informed by our customer discovery journey. Some of them might use it because they want to integrate our calendar into their own existing calendar. Others want to create, uh, take our APIs and be able to inform their own advertisers in new ways as to you know, what is happening. In terms of ROI, I think we are gonna be looking at user satisfaction and conversion rates on websites, user satisfaction and conversion rates around uh, support hotlines, chatbots. Are they being more effective? We have uh, analytics that can look at what questions people are asking the chatbot that is not being answered by the chatbot. In which case, imagine how we can make our chatbot so much more relevant uh, because we have access to all of the things that we aren't responding to. So we're building this knowledge base based on uh, the interactions that are coming in. And uh, of course, over time, uh, this will be an expert system on culture, an objective system based on data but it will take time. I like to say data will be biased until it isn't. Guess what? We have to start. There is no time. This is the best time when we have a little bit more time to think and say, how are we going to make this work? 
Thank you, Davar. This is Vera Ahmed. Can I ask a question still? Do we have time? Yeah, 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 yeah we do. Great presentation. Thank you. I must say it's very different. I get pitched a lot of startups on a daily basis. This is very different from what I usually get pitched. And usually right now it's a lot of ad tech, health tech, ad tech. So it's very interesting. I have two questions as well. First, what was your vision and, ob and your objective to actually create, uh, you know, build the startup? And second, how have you adapted to the situation? Have you changed any of your strategies because of COVID? Thank you so much. Um, so I come from a background as a storyteller, as a journalist at NPR News. I was responsible for 7 million listeners and really engaging a diverse audience beyond the radio. And so as I look at the future of automation, many of the things that are pain points currently in public broadcasting around diversity, around reaching audiences in places that they're comfortable with, that they feel that they're part of um, engagements and stories, that they're not diluted with the mainstream uh, and that there's a sense of belonging. Uh, that is my passion. Uh, also, a year ago, I walked into my granddaughter's home and she said, Aziz, come and meet Alexa, my friend. And I thought, I will dedicate my startup to helping Samantha learn about all of the ways that she's going to be interacting with AI, right? Because AIs are going to be part of our lives. In terms of how I've um, been, you know, decimated during COVID, everything I do is self-funded. And I will tell you that I gave a shout out to my team because they are unwavering. They have worked pro bono for two years. And that's how we are putting this together because we're coming together because we believe in this and um, I'm, uh, we're not giving up. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, we're probably out of time, right? We are, but if there's a very quick question, let's, let's go for it. You, you can, yeah. I, I really don't, uh, I, I can, I, a lot of a project, but I'm just thinking from a sustainability profitability standpoint, the barriers of entry be quite low, um, you know, with the existing corporates that are out there who are getting into the sustainability space. How are you going to uh, differentiate from the, you know, from the Googles, the Microsofts and others who are, you know, really launching into the sustainability space as well? Yes, I'm very honored that Microsoft is sponsoring our data set challenge around the stories of women throughout history. They're very interested in our human centered approach to AI and data. And so I think that it will be through partnerships. I've actually applied to be a Microsoft social entrepreneur. So I'm looking for these partnerships and learning from each other. Great. Thank you. Thank you.